Lionfish are a tropical invasive species native to the Indo-Pacific. And in the last 30 years, they've become established in the Western Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea. Lionfish are a threat to native ecosystems because they reach sexual maturity in one year. They feed on over 100 different prey items. They can tolerate a wide variety of habitats, and they reproduce every two to four days. Today, we're going to dissect our own lionfish and use dissection as a tool to learn more about the characteristics of this invasive species and to see why lionfish are the perfect marine invader. First, we're going to take a look at some of the external anatomy of the lionfish. You can tell some important characteristics about a fish from its external anatomy, uh, such as the body shape and fin shapes. It can give you an idea for whether a fish is fast or slow, whether it prefers to swim in the water column or prefers to hide in tight places. And it also gives you an idea for what kind of prey items it might target. The lionfish is a demersal species, so it prefers to sit on the bottom in sheltered areas. And it is an ambush predator, so it only moves in tight spaces for a short distance uh, to attack prey items. The first thing I will show you are the 18 venomous spines on the lionfish. Now, these spines are not hollow, they are hard structures, and they have grooves, one on each side of the spine. They're filled with a glandular tissue that houses a potent neurotoxin. The neurotoxin can cause pain, uh, tingling, numbness, and even temporary paralysis. The best treatment for a lionfish sting is a heat pack or hot water. It'll help to break down the protein in the neurotoxin. So there are 18 venomous spines on the lionfish, 13 here, one on the front of each pelvic fin here, and three at the front of the anal fin here. For dissection purposes, we recommend that you cut off the spines to avoid potential injury. We'll also show you the warning coloration of lionfish. If you note the stripes of white, black, red, brown. This bright and striped coloration on lionfish aids in blending in with coral reef backgrounds or anywhere with mottled coloration from sunlight, as well as creating a somewhat intimidating appearance to discourage any would-be predators. These fish typically reach 15 inches in their native habitat, but in the Gulf of Mexico have been found to be 19 inches long. We'll also show you the gape, or the mouth opening of the lionfish. Lionfish can consume prey items up to half their body size, and they have this powerful protrusive jaw acts somewhat like a vacuum cleaner to suck up prey items whole and is very useful for an ambush predator. Now we're going to take a look at the internal anatomy of the lionfish. And to do that, I am going to make a cut from the urogenital opening here up to this area here. And there's a pelvic girdle, it's the bone between these two pelvic fins. Um, opening this up will allow us to take a look at the internal anatomy of the lionfish. I'm going to cut close to the skin so that I don't damage any of the internal organs. And here the pelvic girdle is cracked. And I'll make another cut up to the dorsal ridge. Now I can peel back the skin to observe the internal organs here. So in the lionfish up towards the top of the cavity here. Um, you'll see a white structure. This is the swim bladder. The swim bladder is important for regulating buoyancy in fish. This helps them to more efficiently swim, helps them to either float or sink. Just above that will be a pair of structures that are either flat and white, if this is a male, or kind of pinkish and potentially filled with eggs, which would be a female. Below that, we have, this is interstitial fat deposits are kind of within the gut cavity of the fish, and this is abnormal. Uh, lionfish eat more prey items than they have to, to survive, and it generates excess fat, and the liver creates these fat deposits in the cavity. Now I'm going to open up the stomach to see the prey contents inside. So this is straight from the esophagus down into the gut cavity. And I am just going to remove the stomach in its entirety. 
And then I'll make a cut inside the stomach here. And we'll be able to open up the stomach contents and see what this fish last ate. One of the other procedures you can do in a lionfish dissection is to remove the otolith bones. So here in the cranial cavity of the lionfish, uh, right at the base of the spine, there's a small cavity filled with fluid that houses two otolith bones. Uh, these bones help to balance the fish and provide it with a sense of stability. And they also deposit annuli rings where you can see the age of the fish. And it's a really accurate way for scientists to get an age idea for this fish. In order to remove the otolith, uh, the head must be removed, and then the gill rakers and structure must be cut off of the head of the fish. And then there is a small bubble, it's the cavity itself, at the roof of the mouth just before the esophagus starts. And you crack that open, inside is the fluid and the otolith bones, which can be removed. That concludes our lionfish dissection. Now that you know more about this invasive marine species, uh, for more information, or if you would like to get involved in helping to protect Florida's marine ecosystems, please visit myfwc.com lionfish.